Welcome to our Sunday service. Today is December 10th, 2023. If you're listening today, know that this church has a mission of blessing in accordance with the divine order of Melchizedek, a heavenly order without beginning and without end, the same heavenly order as that of Jesus the Christ. So the question is, do you have a need to be blessed? Know that this church is proactive to receive blessings freely given in the Holy Bible, blessings that are available to all who search for ultimate truth. We found that ultimate truth is in nearly 4,000 religions found in the world today. And the cause that produces the effect that releases a treasure trove of blessings to us. And today, as we get closer and closer to the date chosen to celebrate the reason for the season, repeat after me, I give thanks for the gift of God. That is the reason for the season. That is the ultimate truth. I'm Reverend Dr. Sherwood Howland, a licensed ordained minister through the International Metaphysical Ministry Systems, licensed to officiate all functions of our chartered online church whose physical presence is here in the center. And if you have any correspondence that you would like to send to us, it is Dr. Sherwood Howland Ministry, P.O. Box 1696, Anniston, Alabama, 36201. Let us bow our heads and hearts in prayer as we receive the divine who will join us today for our worship service to bless us this week. I call forth the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, the reason for my reason for being, to release all negativity from the week just past and throughout my life. To do so, I turn on my inner light of peace, of power, of creative wisdom, my revitalization, restoration better than before, as a positive statement of my soul's eternal oneness with the heart, mind, and spirit of God. Repeat after me, for this I give thanks, I let it be so, and so it is. Today's service is non-traditional and non-denominational. All religions are welcome to attend our service, as metaphysics is a perfect size for all religions. Let us rejoice today that we receive the favor of God that is an everyday lifestyle from Sunday to Sunday of receiving and giving blessings to ourselves and to others. And you know you must always fill your own cup so that you may have something to give to others. And that is the reason that we bless ourselves and that we're proactive. We comply with the sacred doctrine that is known as the law of grateful retribution and that we know is giving and receiving, going with the flow, paying it forward in relationship to the blessings that we have received. Too much is too many, there is much more given than to others. And particularly, if your blessing is beyond measure, incomprehensible to the ego mind, that it could even happen. When the ego mind rejects the possibility that your blessings could have occurred, we know that it's a spiritual blessing that often goes against all odds that it could even have happened. And you might tell people what happened to you, and they will think, you know, that's incredible. Something incredible that happened is the virgin birth of Jesus, for example. And it's thought to be false due to the fact that it takes two, and we all know that it takes two. While Eastern religions may have accepted this virgin birth due to one who preceded Jesus' birth, Having been born of a virgin, Western religions have long been aware of Leo Su and his teachings. So it's only false to us on this side of the continent. Others have accepted it long ago because to them, Jesus was not the first one who was born of a virgin. This church has chosen Christianity due to the fact that unlike Leo Su and others of similar international recognition and following, it is Jesus who conquered death, 
hell and the grave? Who transcended? Who is the light and love within each of us? That resurrection power that brings life to that which we thought was dead. We are encouraged that it is never too late to experience rebirth of our hopes and dreams. Yes, we dream big. We pray big prayers. That's what we're all about. Repeat after me. I receive resurrection power that gives life, rebirth to my hopes and dreams, especially those that my ego mind says are impossible for whatever reason. When we bring the power of the risen Christ into our daily lives, we are transformed through the renewing of our minds. We allow hope to enter. We allow hope to come alive within our spirit. Repeat after me. I allow hope to enter, to come alive within me. This is the first cause of consciousness of the spirit of eternal life that now lives within you and within me. And of course, you know, absent the spirit, we have a home going. So the spirit returns to its original origin and the body returns to Mother Earth from which it came. The cause of all that is arrives as new awareness leads to understanding that we have a choice in how we live life. Did you know that we have a choice in how we live life and how we are in control? And if not, then we need to be so because we have the power of choice. That is how powerful we are. Let us pray all together the Lord's Prayer that gifts to us the vast treasure trove that we seek. It is the highest expression of truth of ultimate truth, recorded in the Holy Bible by Jesus' disciple Matthew, in St. Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 through 13, let us begin. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Repeat after me. I receive the Lord's Prayer. That is the highest expression of ultimate truth. That provides to me this week a vast treasure trove of blessings. It may be hard to believe and maybe the good news to many people who were unaware, who were deceived by their ego mind, who may have had many of us thinking that we're too weak, we're too small, we don't matter, that no one cares about what happens to us anyway. Our piece of the pie is always too small. We may not fit into the in crowd. And I have a question for you. What would your creator think or say about this way of thinking? Maybe that is a really, really big, so what? Will one day still follow another? The best advice to offset our thinking this way is through prayer, meditation, and contemplation. And I call this doing the inner work making those choices so that we don't care what other people think because we're communing with our creator, with the God of all creation. You become the in crowd as you receive the resurrection power that brings your hopes and dreams to life. So now you know that's how that happens. And the good news is that you don't have to fit into the in crowd. But you do have to fit into the puzzle of life. Not too big and not too small. If you've allowed life to make you into something smaller or bigger than the piece of the puzzle of life, 
adjustments will have to be made so that we each have our part in life, our reason for being. That is not like that is not like anyone else says, is it? It is not their reason for being. You, it is yours. It is your responsibility. And if you get knocked down, it's your responsibility to get back up. It is your responsibility to live. It is a personal thing, as we've said before. In case no one told you how very important you are. Have you ever seen a puzzle with pieces missing? And you're thinking, where are the other pieces? Why don't you put them in here? And sometimes things have happened to those pieces and they don't fit in anymore. But especially if you're a prayer warrior, then you understand the value of putting all the pieces together. That everyone is equally important. They have their piece of the pie. They have their piece of life. Your prayers, in case you didn't know, command the heavens to give you what you want. That is the power of your choice in prayer, meditation, and contemplation. Your prayers literally shift the entire universe on a particle-by-particle -particle basis until from the furthest parts of the universe, life must bring to you that which you have prayed for. Prayer is a call to primal light energy. When we call on primal light energy, out of which all that is, was, or ever will be, out of which all the good was created, you're going to the source of that energy, and the energy is free. Sometimes you might have made bad choices, and you can recycle that energy. You say, oh, I didn't mean that. That's not what I wanted. And you have a different thought. So each time you pray, meditate, and contemplate, you may get a better idea about what's available because opportunities appear when you pray, meditate, and contemplate. And the source of the energy of all that is, was, or ever will be is the level where prayers accumulate. The level where prayers accumulate is called the Ladder of Lights, and Jacob saw it in his dream. If you recall, Jacob wrestled with the angel and asked him his name, and that archangel was Sandalphon, and he wrestled with the angel until daybreak, when he finally received the answer to his prayer. Jacob was a prayer warrior. He understood that when he prayed, he could receive an answer. He could receive an answer right away. But he had to be diligent in the prayer, meditation, and contemplation. And this church recommends prayer, meditation, contemplation, 12 to 14 minutes twice a day. And any time you have a moment to make a choice that will benefit you, add value to your life, do so. And you know Archangel Gabriel is the partner to Archangel Sandalphon who announces to the universe of all that is, was, or ever will be, that everything has changed, that everything has shifted, that a prayer has been answered, that those in the church who have the gift of knowledge hear with their mind's ear, their heart's ear, that big announcement, that your prayer has been answered, Everything has shifted in your favor. And how do they know that? Because they are in touch. They commune with the source of all. To connect to your spiritual light energy, what you need to see will be revealed. And new opportunities, as I said, will begin to appear as your focus shifts and you connect to your creator to become the co-creator. Instead of accepting the fate that life brings to you, you begin to shift your fate into something that you actually want, 
a blessing, something you would consider a blessing. So instead of accepting the fate that life brings to you, know that the light of life is within you. It is much easier to manifest the life you dare to dream is yours that you could move into, move on up to a higher way of living, where clean living is the only way to live, the only permanent happiness, if you know what I mean. Each Sunday service lecture, we provide an opportunity to accept communion by way of spiritual prayer treatment for all within the sound of my voice to experience ultimate reality, divinity, spiritual truth, or God through direct experience, intuition, instinct, or insight. Dear Father, Mother, God, Divine Holy Presence of Jesus the Christ, the Healer, into your welcoming arms of love, I recommit my life. I invite your divine blessings into my life. I give up the struggle. I surrender all to that primal light energy that resurrects my hopes and dreams, rebirths the life I dare to dream is mine, as surely as one day follows another, as I pray that this is so. Today, I am proactive. I choose to be blessed. I choose to give and receive, and it becomes second nature to me. Let it be that I go with the flow of the richness of all that life can bring to me. I acknowledge that I cannot control the outcome or circumstances for others, only myself as a yielded vessel, yielding my will into your will, dear God. I invite your divine mind to guide me, to be free from any attachments to any person, place, or thing, any so-called in-crowd, as I forever bask in the light and love and ultimate truth that I am your favorite child. Repeat after me for this realization today and every day. I give thanks. I let it be so. And so it is. We always have our closing prayer affirmations as we affirm it is God within us who does all good things. That primal light energy within us, the light of life that is when within us, so that wherever we are, whatever we're doing, whatever we have, whatever we give, whatever forgiveness that is needed, it is God who forgives, who knows all. Whatever peace we may know, whatever love we may have, whatever success we may have, it is God within us, that light, that primal light energy, who has allowed us to succeed, and we are eternally grateful. Let us receive the benediction found in Numbers chapter 6, verses 24 through 26. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. For all of our prayers on the altar, we receive the benediction. Repeat after me. I receive the benediction. I give thanks that good satisfying results quickly appear. Now for our closing prayer, Divine Father, Mother God, Divine Presence of Jesus the Christ that blesses us with grace and ultimate truth so that as we are blessed, we bless others as well as ourselves with the good news that we surrender to a new paradigm where we are going with the flow of grace and truth that adds so much more value to our lives, the value of lasting happiness. We are delighted you've chosen this church to be forever established in your perfect love, in your perfect will. We bask always in your divine delight as you provide for us, protect us and prosper us, shower us with unlimited blessings because we are your favorite child. May we forever draw closer and near to you, enter into the rest of my soul's prosperity. I am forever grateful. I am forever 
thankful. Repeat after me. Glory be to the Father, glory be to the Son, glory be to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it's now, and forever shall be, a world without end. Amen. And I say blessings to you and yours until we meet again. Blessings.